Right, some last minute AQA GCSE Chem tips for you. So let's not forget the history of the atom. I know you guys don't like revising this, but remember Thompson created the plum pudding model, which you can kind of imagine as a giant cookie. So let's pretend we have chocolate chips, which would have been plums in his day. These were representing electrons. And then surrounding that was the positive charge. Obviously that was extremely wrong and incorrect. And it was Rutherford that helped us understand the modern day structure of the atom. So what did he do? He fired alpha particles, which remember are positively charged. That's important that you know that. At gold leaf. And what did he find out? And therefore, what did he conclude about the structure of the atom? First of all, most alpha particles pass straight through the foil. So what can we conclude about the structure of the atom? That it's actually largely empty space, which obviously differs greatly from Thompson's plum pudding model. Some alpha particles were deflected. Now, deflected means that they were effectively repelled so they must have com come in contact with something which was the same charge i've just told you that alpha particles are positively charged so that means they must have come in contact with something very positive that was in fact a nucleus so we can therefore infer that the nucleus is positively charged which we know is true because it contains protons and then lastly very few Alpha particles were deflected. And so really what that tells us is that the nucleus is very small. A couple of other scientists you need to be aware of. Chadwick, who discovered neutrons. Please don't confuse these scientists. And therefore, he helped us understand what an isotope is. You do need to learn the definition of that, which is atoms of the same element with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. Four helped us understand that electrons orbit the nucleus in shells. Mendeleev, who we kind of think of as the godfather of the modern day periodic table, was an incredible guy because he left gaps in the periodic table for undiscovered elements. And he also correctly predicted their properties. So he predicted the properties of those undiscovered elements. We'll touch now on electrolysis. Remember the type of substance which undergoes electrolysis is a giant ionic structure, which is made up of oppositely charged ions. Remember that ionic structure needs to be molten or in aqueous solution. And they could ask you why. That's to enable the ions to be free to move. You will not find electrolysis will work if you have a solid ionic structure. And that's because the ions aren't free to move. Let's look at electrolysis rules now. So in case they want you to talk about what sort of substance will be discharged at each electrode. So, at the negative electrode, which is the cathode, it's the least reactive element that forms. So you do need to examine that reactivity series and make sure you're happy with that. It's likely to be something like hydrogen, copper, or any of the jewellery metals like silver, gold, platinum. At the positive electrode, the anode, it will be the halogen that forms preferentially followed by oxygen. So just to show you an example, so what about if we were to electrolyze aqueous sodium chloride? So you have to first of all work out what ions are present. Aqueous means that there's both H plus and OH minus, sodium and chlorine. So let's start with the negative electrode. 
First of all, we know we're picking between these two ions because opposites attract. Remember to include that in your explanation if they ask why it discharges. And according to our rules, we're looking for the least reactive element. Sodium is a group one metal, it's extremely reactive. So that's why it's hydrogen. And to show you the half equation, it will look like this. Remember hydrogen is diatomic, so we'll need that too. And then in order to make the neutral hydrogen, we need to add two electrons. And if you add electrons, remember that's known as reduction. What about at the positive electrode now? Remember we said that the halogen forms preferentially, so that's going to be the group seven elements. Chlorine is one of those. So chlorine forms. So there's our Cl minus. We're forming a diatomic molecule Cl2, so get it balanced. Because you want something neutral for something which was negative, you want to take away those electrons. However, we prefer not to write it like that. Just rearrange it a little bit. This is exactly the same thing. And this time, oxidation has taken place because electrons have been lost. Right. I hope you found that helpful, guys. I can make more content like this ahead of your exam. Just let me know in the comments. But for me, this is some really key stuff which people either don't properly revise, like the history stuff here, or this is pretty hardcore chem down here. And it is important that you understand it fully.